Cyrus Reed, Chair, I've got two quick questions on the certified design process. The first question is, how can we as the public be involved? Is, are, are there opportunities for public input into the review of the certified design? That's the first question. The second is maybe more philosophical. How, how can you be reviewing the application at a time when you haven't finished reviewing whether the actual design of the reactor is going to work or not. How does that work? It seems to me you'd want to do the reactor first and then the application, but obviously you guys have a different way to do it, so I want to understand that process. Let's, let's explain that to you. And uh, Jeff, do you want to talk about the process? And it is a different process than a hearing. It's a rulemaking process. Do you want to talk from here on what process is used and then we can try to explain a little bit, Cyrus, about what seems like a disconnect, but it it, it makes more sense than that. Go ahead. You can participate. The licensing review process for the design certification for the Mitsubishi US APWR is slightly different from this combined license application process where we don't have the formal adjudicatory hearing process. We're going through right now reviewing the application and the staff is going to write a safety evaluation report. Um, that will be that will that will be reviewed by the advisory committee on reactor safety. Uh, we will we will send them a draft of the application. You can look at the application, or I'm sorry, we will send them a draft of the of the, of the staff safety evaluation report. They'll review it. We will also make that publicly avail publicly available for your review. Uh, at the completion of the staff review, we will issue a final safety evaluation report. We will make that. Um, we will make that document publicly publicly available for you to provide comments on. We'll go through a six month to one year rulemaking process where you can review the uh, staff safety evaluation report and make any comments on it. In the proposed rule, we will take all those comments and address them and uh, issue a final rulemaking, a final decision on the uh, design certification project. So that's it's it's a slightly different process from the from the uh, combined license application, but there is opportunity for you to review, one, the uh, draft uh, safety evaluation report, as well as the final safety evaluation report, and that'll go through a six to 12 month rulemaking process. As far as your question, it's a good question about how can we do a licensing review of the design certification process, which we got in December 31st of last year, and then get a combined license application when, when the staff hasn't made this decision yet on the reactor design technology. That's a good point. And both of these processes are going to go along in parallel. We won't make a final decision on the combined license since Lumen has chosen the Mitsubishi reactor technology. The staff will have to make its final safety evaluation. It'll have to be approved uh, by the agency and then referenced in the in the uh, Lumen application. So there is there is a parallel process between the reactor design technology certification and the combined license. But we cannot issue a combined license application until we've completed our, our, our design certification process. And I think the current schedule that we've made publicly available has us completing our design certification process around the September 2011 timeframe. So after Steve gets the application from Luminant, he's gonna sit down, look at the application, and determine its quality and then lay out a schedule for its licensing review through the very end, through you know, up to the hearing point. But he's going to have to look at my schedule for the licensing review of the Mitsubishi design certification. He can't be ahead of me because we're 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 we are reviewing the major systems and components of that reactor design. And just one further point that goes that maybe is a, a, a big point of confusion, and I'm going to ask uh, Jim or Jim Biggins or Tom to correct me on this. The hearing that was mentioned, if you want to participate in the hearing, you may have to come in early, earlier than when the final design is certified. Well, <coughs> the company in their combined license application will reference this design that is not yet certified. And contentions can be filed on the interface aspects between that design and the site. So contentions can be offered there. When the design is finally certified by rulemaking, 
if there are major differences between what was referenced in the license application and what is finally certified, then there will be an opportunity for people to to file contentions on that. Is that correct? That's basically correct, Chip. But so it would be Office General Counsel. Yeah, thank you, Jim Biggins, Office of General Counsel. Uh, that's basically correct. But those would be late filed contentions at that point. It wouldn't be a, a new initial contention period. Uh, there are no contentions or, or hearing in the rulemaking process. Uh, there is a comment process, as he illustrated. Uh, so any issues that were not resolved by the rulemaking uh, could be brought up by uh, a petition for leave to intervene in the hearing process for the COL application. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Just, one, just one final clarification from Tom Bergman. And if we need to get into the details of this, but we know that there are broader questions in the hearing process, but the hearing process is important. We'll be glad to, to talk after the meeting on this. But Tom, did you just want to make one clarification? Yeah. Uh, well, we did tell you that the flowchart was the simplified version of the process, but uh, the areas that are addressed in the design certification, if they're resolved through that rulemaking, we get, they have what they call finality. They're not subject to hearing. It's Chip mentioned it's either the interface or those portions that are specific to the site that are covered in the combined license application that are only open to hearing. So if this if this design had already been certified, take like the uh, advanced boiling water reactor that South Texas is using, any issue that was addressed through that design certification is not subject to hearing. So it's going to be the same, but the overlap of the two reviews certainly makes it more complicated, uh, both for the staff in terms of keeping track of which issues being addressed where and, and by any potential And that uh, rulemaking that is used to certify the design is a public notice and comment rulemaking and it's how the public participates in that.